Mr. Speaker, sir, if you look at the personal law, it is only, it only encompasses marriage, divorce, and uh, the inheritance. <laughs> Therefore, what we are requiring, what I'm requiring is the removal of section, the, the removal of personal in section 24 of the Constitution, section 262, section 277, and section 288, so that other relevant laws, like the public, uh, the, the commercial law, Islamic commercial law, the Islamic company law, the Islamic international law, can have a place in the Constitution. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, this is what I want the honorable colleagues to support so that this amendment can be done. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Yes. People want to speak to the bill? Somebody was raising his hand there. Yes. Sir, don't be say something. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. And distinctly, uh, I remain engineer, Sir Tommy Ahmed. Mr. Speaker, uh, the point uh, my colleague, Honorable Mr. Who is calling, I think, is in the right direction to give a back off for the commercials and other laws that already <coughs> they are practicing without proper backing, particularly in our Islamic related financial institution of not only limited to touch bank or Jais bank, but there are several uh, banks that are now practicing, particularly the Mudahara and the other sharing formulas. I think this is a very welcome development that it will give uh, even an economic leeway for the nation to see the goodness of uh, such practices in our financial institution to get the back off of the law. I do support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes, Bob Solomon, please. Solomon Bob. All right, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and my respected colleagues. My name is Solomon Bob from the great state of Rivers. Now, uh, this matter, actually, I think it should be, it will be dealt with uh, in better technical detail at the committee uh, level for constitutional review, because there's, there's so much to say about this kind of... Uh, uh, okay. okay, I'm sorry. Yes, I was told you were not listening to me. I'm saying that this... I'm saying that uh, this bill we better dealt with you know, in broader technical detail at the level of uh, committee for consumer review. But straight off, the section you're referring to, if it is removed, the word personal is removed, the implication immediately is that um, Islamic law will now have a general application with respect to criminal law the country. The word personal there will put for a purpose. So if you remove it, that's the implication. It will have great consequences. So we can look at the details of what it's trying to do, what it's trying to achieve, and advice at the committee level. With respect to the references they made to Taij Bank and Jais Bank, their operations have not been in any way hindered. There are regulations dealing with those matters concerning banks, CBN Act, and all the rest of them. So those are matters that the banks can deal with. They don't have to incorporate, you know, um, or attract or drag interest with respect to uh, commercial um, ambitions to the Constitution. So essentially, Mr. Speaker, my point is, this uh, bill should be referred to the committee on control review, where we can sit down and then um, look at, you know, it to a T in every, 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 every way. Thank you. Thank you for making it brief. I like contributions to be straight to the point and brief. Now, Bamidele Salam, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bamidele Salam, at the north, at the south, a better age of federal constituency of Washington State. Mr. Speaker, I, I want to, with respect, um, differ from the mobile of the bill on the need for us to amend the Nigerian constitution in this particular instance. 
And I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, because um, as students of history, we all know the issues surrounding the particular section in reference, especially at the various constituent assemblies leading to the 1979 Constitution, the 1989 Constitution that was not uh, promulgated, and now the 1999 Constitution. Mr. Speaker, the drafters of the Nigerian Constitution are very conscious of the secularity of the Nigerian nation and also very conscious of the sensitive nature of religion. And I remember the 1976 Constitutional Assembly, the 1979 Constitution, was very, very contentious on this matter until the then federal military government came in to stop further debate on this matter and took a decision that the application of Islamic laws will only be constrained to personal uh, matters, which has to do with administration of estates and some other issues. Mr. Speaker, we have to be very, very cautious of whatever we do to alter the Nigerian culture in a manner that will further widen the divide that we have as a country. And in any case, Mr. Speaker, like my previous colleague said, the matters which my colleague seek to address by this proposal is already covered by existing laws. The, 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 uh, the uh, 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 Kama law, you know, covers regulation on issue of finances and allows for its application of Islamic principles of financial transaction. The same thing with the, uh, you know, the same thing with the, uh, the CBN Act, you know, like Riley said. And the moment we allow the constitution to be altered to take care of all manner of interests, we will no longer be in the state where the sanctity of the constitution is respected and the, 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 the intent of the drafters of the Nigerian constitution via or as regards to the secular, secular nature of the Nigerian nation might be threatened if we allow this to go on. Mr. Speaker, I sincerely think that this bill should not pass on for the second reading for these reasons I've adduced. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me go back. For once I've been raising his hand. Let me hear you. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Respected members of the House, my name is Honorable Abdul Hakim Kamilo Ado, representing Udilgarko uh, Federal Constituency, Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I would like to make it brief to say that while being cautious, but we have to consider, and considering also the divisions we have in this country, we have to consider the ethics, the values, and the interest of the masses. Because we are here in this hollow chamber to represent the Nigerians, and also not to make a religion or a tribe or a community, not to constrain them from practicing something which is their way of life. We all know that Nigeria comprises of uh, so many religion and also tribes and communities. But this religious matters, we consider it as a way of life, not just a mere religion. So considering the ethics and the values and the interest of the masses, not looking at the division or being cautious of what this will cause, Mr. Speaker, I think this bill is supposed to pass for the second reading. In my opinion, Mr. Speaker, we need to commend the Honorable Misau for coming up with this bill in order to unite and to create a room, free room or an interest for people that are practicing Islamic religion to practice their religion freely and to consider some way of lives which comprises so many things. Talk less of the, uh, the commercial that he talked about. There are so many things we need to consider in order to encompass it under this bill. If at all we are considering this bill to be passed via the committee, then Mr. Speaker, as you said earlier, that we are here as uh, parliamentarians in order to pass bills and it doesn't have to go through the committee. So we can pass it and then later on the committee can consider what they can do about the bill. But we are here to debate it and we are debating it. So let us go on with the debate and uh, later on consider what we can go with in this hallow chamber. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. very much. Let me, I've noticed you, Kuya. But let me yield the floor to the man in white behind. Please turn off your microphone so that others can use. Yes, the last speaker. Last speaker, turn off your microphone.
Thank you very much, uh, Evil Speaker. My name is Honorable Isa Muhammad Anka, representing Anka at that time of our constituency. I'm from Zamfara State. My Evil Speaker, our Honorable colleagues, I wouldn't want to dwell on issues already spoke by the last speaker. In other words, he has spoken my mind. But the other speaker, the last but one, talked about karma. Karma is already embedded in the Constitution. Therefore, it takes care of other commercial laws. And I think we need to understand the subject matter of this bill. The bill is calling for description of Islamic law. In other words, the bill is seeking the house to define, because of the existing situations now, looking at the issue of, uh, like he rightly caught, you know, other commercial laws that have not been embedded, that have not been taken care into the constitution. I think it's a straightforward bill. It's not, he is not calling the fact that, I mean, for, he's not calling for the, for, 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 you know, expanding, expanding the existing Sharia law, but rather to define it in order to encompass all those, you know, existing situations that have just come up. That is my, my, my contribution, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's not talking about Sharia law. He's talking about the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So that we get it right, his bill is about the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the Sharia law. Okay, Jonathan, please, let's hear you. Um. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Gaza Jonathan Befi, and I represent the people of Karu, Kefi, Kokona, Para, constituency of Nasara State. Mr. Speaker, Nigeria is a secular state, and be it as it may, our constitution is one of the most liberal when it comes to governance of a nation. Mr. Speaker, our constitution allows for freedom of worship of all religions. Mr. Speaker, we would not sit in this hollow chamber and restrict ourselves to just a few. If we begin to put such components into the constitution, tomorrow, the ecclesiastical faction comes up. The day after, the traditional faction comes up. The day after, all other components begin to come up. And what happens to our grand norm that is supposed to be the foundation of our existence? Mr. Speaker, Nigeria has never limited anybody from practicing his religion. You go to states like in the north, where you have Sharia being practiced as the criminal code for those states. It is because it's peculiar to them as a people and as a presence. By the time we begin to expand it and bring it into our constitution, we are not an Islamic state. We're a secular state. We're not a celestial state. We're a secular state. We are not a traditional worship state. We're a secular state that respects and gives everybody a sense of belonging. We're a nation. We need to be sensitive to the mood and the existence freedom of speech, freedom of association, to live in happiness, not a scenario whereby there could be some misconceptions. To this end, I wish to crave the donors of the sponsor of this bill that he steps it down for more legislative input which, and consultation, which would be more in tune with our beliefs and the norms. But I do not believe it is a legislation that should pass for second reading. I so submit. The man in blue, I can't see your face closely, but let's, let's hear you from the back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Not you, behind. Uh, uh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my respected colleagues. Uh, I want to comment as the first, uh, the second to the last speaker spoke. In fact, the bill that was moved by the sponsor, uh, we are supposed to commend him. I agree Nigeria is a secular state, 
where we have different opinions, traditions, religion, and what have you. But uh, if you see this motion or this bill, it will help Nigerians to know that uh, these commercial banks, especially Taj Bank and what have you, many people have the perceive that uh, these banks are specifically for Muslim, while it is not. So by expanding this nature, I believe when it is encompasses to everybody, many people will see the benefit of this bill, and I believe in the near future, many people will see that uh, the mover put this in the right direction. Thank you very much. Honorable Kuya. Speaker, my name remains Ademori Aliukuye. I rise to add my voice to this uh, all important um, motion for a bill to amend our constitution with respect to the expansion of the description of Islamic law. Let me start by saying that the constitution mandates our government that they shall not adopt any religion as a state religion, meaning that Nigeria is a secular state. Number two is the fact that Section 38 is very clear as to the rights given to all Nigerians in terms of choice of religion and how they worship. Section two goes further to say that Nigeria is a federation consisting of the federal government and then the state's government giving the states the liberality to adopt whatever kind of law they want to use in governing their people. And that's why we have some states with all this Sharia law and all of that. They are permitted to do it, the state as of assembly. But the Constitution has a ground norm that governs all of us, the traditional institutions, the Obas in the Yoruba land, the Igwe in the East, the Shakiri, the Fulanis, the Hausas, gives us only one right, the right to choose whichever one we want. We can therefore not allow this constitution to become so filled with frivol frivolities that is supposed to be the mandate of the state. We have all been clamoring for physical federalism. Give more power to the state to do it the way they want, to do it in the way of the culture of their people. And that's why I want to implore the mover of this uh, motion to please um, allow us to please step down this amendment for the time being, so that we can deliberate more on it. Because, of course, from the way I see it, it's such that the state should be considering, not here. The problem of religious war, we started as far back as 1938 in this country. Let it not start here again. Let it not be that it is this house that is going to put fire to the very fragile democracy, to the very fragile situation, the unity between us. It's very important. As we are talking now, people are hearing us. People are seeing us. Thinking that we want to promote one religion over the other. I therefore pray that we step this down for the time being. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks a lot. Uh, let me, the man from Niger, let me hear from you. And um, <clears throat> thank you we'll so much. One more, one more, and one more, we'll close. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Saeed Musa Abdelai. I represent the people of Bida, Bako, Kaja Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I'm from Niger State. Mr. Speaker, I think um, we need not lose sight of what uh, the proposal of uh, of the bill intends to achieve. I understand how sensitive matters related to religion are, especially in this country. 
But the fact of the matter is, we cannot treat religions, religion issues in isolation. There are issues that we must bring to the front burner and discuss, irrespective of how sensitive they are. I didn't want to stand, but I, I looked at uh, the sensitivity, even from the arguments, you could see the sensitivity that is driving the, the sentiment that is driving the argument. But if we focus Honorable Ali, what, I approach the chair. If we focus on what the bill intends Ms. to achieve, Honorable, approach the, chair. the bill intends to review the description of Islamic law, which means it's already enshrined in the Constitution. What it seeks to achieve is to review the description. So it's already in the Constitution. I don't understand why uh, we will see it as something that will lead to snowball into a crisis or what have you. This is um, what we have done that over the years that has led us to not make progress on certain issues. It doesn't matter how sensitive these issues are. We must be able to debate them. This is what our people sent us here to do. You know, um, if we run away from discussing a problem, if we assume it to be a problem, and we're running away from discussing it, how will you prefer a solution to it? I will agree and accept the fact that there is need for further, broader consultation. But for us to run away from the problem, for us to drop it and say it's not an issue to be discussed on this floor, I don't think it's something that is acceptable. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Yes, thank you very much. Can I hear from um, Honorable Babajide? Babajide Leke. Yes, I should have seen you. I'm Mansra, then we'll round up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Leke Abijide. I represent the good people of Yagba Federal Constituency. I'm from Kogi State. Mine is an appeal because of the mood in the house now that this bill be stepped down for when we have all our leaders seated so that they can also contributes to the debates. I want to appeal that if you look today now, most of the leaders are on their way to Jigawa State to commiserate with them. Because of the sensitive nature of this bill, my appeal is for us to step it down and let us have a full house and full time to discuss this bill. We cannot rush it. The way we want to rush it, it may not even get the result that we want the bill to achieve. I'm not saying the bill should not go. All I'm saying is that let us have time to discuss it in full. As I'm speaking to you, I have not seen the details of the bill. So, and for us to be able to contribute meaningfully, we need the details of this bill. Without the details of the bill, if you are talking, you are only talking to the air. Maybe it's different from those sections you are quoting in the Constitution. And it may not have any issue to do with it. Let us have the details of this bill so that we digest it and come back another day for the debate. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues.
Order, please. Order, please. Mr. Speaker, please put this to vote. Let's vote and move on. All right, all right. Thank you, thank Let's you. Let's put it to vote you. and move on. Thank you. Um, I think we are. Order, spoken... please. Huh? You know that um, our country is a unique country. No matter how you look at it, our diversity is what defines us. So when issues like this come up, it must be thoroughly looked into and should not be done in a hess. Let me ask you, how many of you have copies of this bill? If you have, I would like, I would like to know the percentage of people who have copies of this bill. And you can, if I ask you about one or two paragraphs, you read it for me. If I appoint you now, say, give me two, three paragraphs in that bill, and you're able to mention it to us, it means that you have it. Let me ask you, if you know you don't have a copy, raise your hand. And it is the rule of this house that you must have a copy, so that you debate from that copy. If you say you have a copy, I'll call you now, and I'll ask you questions on some of the paragraphs and the sections he's referring to. You will not be able to answer it. And this issue is an issue that we need to thoroughly Order, please. Analyze. Please, order, please. It is our rule here that issues like this, we must have copies we look at. And if the copies are not there, we take another step. But I won't be taking that step from this chair. It will come from the house. So if the majority of the people say they don't have copies of this bill, whether it is good or bad, you don't have the copies, you need to have the copies for us to deliberate on it. Let me hear you, Kim Kama. Please, your microphone. We can't hear you. Use the one that is working. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Kama Nkem Kama is my name. I represent the awesome people of Ohozara, Onecha, and Ibo Federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Ebony State. Mr. Speaker, this motion is a very sensitive one. This bill is a very sensitive one. And before this bill can be talked about here or debated, one, I believe that all of us here should have a copy of this bill to look at it and be able to go through it because of the sensitivity of this particular bill, sir. Mr. Speaker, I don't envy you today, but one thing I'm very sure, I, move, I hereby move that this bill... Please, somebody, is, somebody has the floor. Allow him to floor, finish, please. then we we'll recognize the floor, you. I have the position of the speaker. I hereby move that this bill be stepped down today and let it be shared for all of us to have a look at. Point of orders. Mr. Speaker, and my very distinguished colleagues, I am Awaji Nombeg Dagomie Abiyante, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I represent Andoni Yopobo Nkoro Federal Constituency. I am a reverse man. Mr. Speaker, my very distinguished colleagues, recall that just yesterday, I had a bill to alter a section of the Nigerian Constitution as well. And concerns were raised that that portion was crafted, well crafted in the interest of the peace and unity of this country. That that amendment should be stepped down. It took just the Speaker presiding yesterday to step down that bill. One common interest for the peace unity of this country. This is similar to what we did yesterday, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, 
For that same singular purpose of the unity of this country, the peace and stability of all of us, I second this motion, since it has gotten to this point, that this bill be stepped down for this moment so that we can do elaborate engagement and get back to it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You know, my position as a presiding officer, I'm not to be... Mr. Speaker, speaking. point of order. So when what we'll do... point of order, you should take it. Mr. Speaker, point of order. You shouldn't ignore us. Please. Please, please, please. Can you hear Mr. Speaker first, please? Now, the motion here is that it be stepped down. You can say no. If the vote say no, don't step it down. Mr. Speaker has no right to step it down. But the motion has been moved and seconded. If we say Our no, don't step really it down. Mr. Speaker. When there is a point of order, we please, should take speaking. it. Please. I'm no, 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 no. Mother, please sit down, please. <clears throat> Sit down. When we vote and the vote says no, we don't step it down, we vote on the main issue raised by the bill. After all, it's a constitutional matter. He can also go to. He can, he can, uh, Manu, don't be unruly, please. No, I'm please. not being unruly. We can, we can also vote on it and it will go to constitutional review. You understand? And then if it goes to constitutional review, we call public hearing. So there are so many ways to solve this problem. Let's not make it, let's not leave, let's not leave our procedure. Okay? So let me ask the question. Those in support that it be stepped down, say aye. Aye. Those again, say nay. Yeah. How do we measure the decibel? <laughs> let me ask again. Those in support that it be stepped down, say aye. Aye. Those are against say nay. Yeah. The nays have it. <laughs> the nays have it. So we are going to vote on it. If we support it, it goes to constitutional review. If we say no, we will drop it. All right? So the question, uh, again, is those in support that this be read the second time. Say aye. aye. Those are against say nay. No! This one is clear now. The nays have it. <laughs> All right, it's good to vote on these things and then uh, decide thereafter. <laughs> it's not my decision, it's your decision. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, oh, order, please. Order, please. Take your seats. All right. The... The third order of the day is commencement of Chief, debate. Chief, you are not doing your work. Chief, on the general principles.